Hi there and welcome back to John's Watch Joint Fresh off the back of my AliExpress haul video for May. A lot of you are really interested in that video. 10,000 views and 150 new subscribers. Welcome aboard guys and to all my existing subscribers. Thank you very much for your support. I really do appreciate it. Now today I've chosen to review the Addy's Dive AD2056 first. The Shark Master 300 as it were. I'll get into the story of that later on. But as one of the more popular requests via email, there were two watches you were wanting, and this is one of them, so that's why I've chosen this one today. 2020 C for Addy's Dime, fantastic year, they really couldn't do anything wrong. 2024, a bit hit and miss. Is this one a hit? Is it a miss? Let's find out. And here we have it. This is the Addy's Dive AD2056 and it pays homage to one of two watches depending on which way you look at it. For me, it's like this. I love skin divers and if I'd been around at the time, this watch here you're seeing on screen would have been on my bucket list. This is the Omega Seamaster 300 and for me, this is what a diver should look like. So for me, the Addy's Dive is paying homage to this watch. But a few years back, Helsin released their homage to this watch and it looks almost identical to this current Addy's Dive AD2056. Hence, you could say this watch more accurately homages the Helsin Shark Master 300, which makes it an homage of an homage. Uh, it's a wee bit convoluted, but no matter what camp you fall in, this watch will sink or swim on its quality. And there is a bit of quality here at just 109 US dollars. So let's start with the specs. And here we have mostly good news. There is nothing worse than loving the look of a watch only to find that it's going to be too big or too small for your wrist. This might be a design based on a skin diver but they've kept the diameter to a pretty universal size at a hair under 40mm. The lug to lug is just fine at 46mm but with the rubber overhang it's still a very pleasing 48.5mm. Thickness is as you would expect with a Seiko NH35 automatic powering the watch and is 13.7mm from the back plate to the centre of the double domed sapphire crystal. And I'm happy to see here that the lug width is a standard 20mm. When I said it was mostly good news, it's simply because they haven't got the correct NH38 movement in here given there is no date. So there is a ghost date position, but that really isn't a biggie at this price point. The finish is a deliberately rough and ready brushed effect with the signature twisted lugs breaking up the case footprint nicely. The anti-reflective coating is a very strong blue, keeping the matte black dial legible but it can be a distraction and sometimes that dial actually appears glossy. The signed screw down crown is a nice size at 6.8mm in diameter and is grippy enough and a screw down case back will help to bolster the cleaned water resistance of 200 meters. We have an equally grippy 120 click unidirectional bezel with a polished ceramic bezel insert which does add a certain luster to the watch and you do need those grippy teeth on that bezel but we'll get onto that later. The weight as supplied is 87.5 grams so it's not a heavy watch as rather than a bracelet Addy's Dive have opted to supply this watch on what seems to be an FKM rubber waffle strap which feels good in quality but it will max out at a wrist size of around 7 inches so bear that in mind. As for the loom, well, let's have a look at that in the legendary Cupboard of Doom. Welcome to the Cupboard of Doom, where watches come to test their loom strengths against the forces of darkness. Here the AD2056 fares very well with evenly applied BGW9 Superluminova on the hands, indices and the bezel. Other brands should learn from Addy's Dive. As expected, it's a strong 8 out of 10 for this watch. Excellent result. Yes, a really good result in the loom department there, and that was expected to be honest. It is rare for Addy's Dive to drop the ball with loom, but then again, we have seen it before. However, when it comes to how this watch wears, this is where the watch really shows its true metal. That FKM rubber strap is supremely comfortable, and the two keepers, one fixed and one floating, do their job extremely well. On my 6 3 quarter inch wrist, this watch wears impeccably for me. However, as I did mention earlier, if you have a wrist bigger than 7 inches, make sure you have another FKM rubber strap to hand. But it is very versatile and lends itself to other styles of strap also, as can be seen here. Now you can probably already tell by the tone in my voice that I'm really enjoying this watch and it's a pleasure to get a watch like that especially from Addy's Dive 
Last year they couldn't do anything wrong. This year they've been a bit hit and miss. And this one is a return to form and I'm glad of that. Over this last couple of days, I've not been able to take this one off my wrist simply because of its size, how it wears, how comfortable it is and most importantly, how it looks. That stark white on black means it's ultra legible and it means it's very easy to tell the time and it's just a beautiful, simple looking watch. Telling the time is just a breeze on this one. But are there any caveats? Well, we said we were going to talk about this bezel earlier on simply because it's got really good knurling on it and you get a good underhang there. So that's the good thing about it. It's not overhanging. There's a bit of an underhang because you got a nice scalloped edge on that. So it means you get a good grip in this thing. What does that mean? Well, this is a very tight action. It means it's not going to be knocked, but it's very true and tactile. So you can get this quite easily. It's a bit harder than you would like, but I do like that sometimes. And this one has got that. I do like it. Let's have a listen to this on the microphone. Sorry, I do apologise. I kicked the mic stand out of the way there, so I'm restarting the shot. So here is the watch on the microphone. So let's have a listen here just now. Nice tight action. Nice and uniform. Yeah, even all the way around. And it lines up. Can't be bad at that, can it? So that's the Addis Dive AD2056. And it has caught me by surprise. As I said, Addis Dive this year have been a bit of a disappointment for me. Because normally they are so good for the price. But this is a pleasant return to form. Actually better than that. This is a cracking little watch here. I'll bring it in a little closer so you can see this dial. Ultra legible. Nice set of hands on there. Black against white, it doesn't get much better than that. Typical sea urchin look. And yeah, it's just a cracking watch to look at. It gets a lot of compliments. What more do you want? So that's the Addis Dive AD2056. Does this watch get my recommendation? For around about 110 US dollars, this is an absolute no-brainer. It's a shame that this strap isn't a bit longer, but maybe at the point of order, ask for a longer strap. You might get lucky, you never know. Or just order yourself a longer one from the platform. I'm going to leave it there just now, guys. One thing I would ask, though, please remember to subscribe. As I said in my last video, only 1 in 200 of you end up subscribing. It's just one of those things you watch a video and you forget. It really helps if you do. It allows me to get a lot more watches in as well. So I'll leave it there just now, guys. I'll catch you again on the next one. Ta-ra for now.